Thank you very much, Mr. Mangi. As I read the backgrounds of both of the nominees, I was struck by similarities and contrast. Similarities in terms of your legal careers and what you've set out to do, sometimes facing great controversy in the process. And contrast in terms of where you came from and how you happen to be sitting at that table next to one another at this moment in history. It reminded me of two famous Americans whose lives were separated by 200 years of history. The first, John Adams, who's in 1770, stepped up and risked his life and his legal career and his political career, for that matter, to defend British soldiers after the deadly riot in Boston. And then I thought as well as of Ruth Bader Ginsburg. A known advocate came before this Senate asking to be appointed to the Supreme Court. At the end of the day, she never backed down on any of her beliefs and made it clear what, what her values would be if she was on the court and was clear enough to this committee that the final vote was 96 to 3. I wish you the same good luck. But just to make the point that uh, this committee saw a person who was uh, convic convinced of her own values and didn't shrink from that conviction and still believed she could be a good, good and fair jurist, which she proved to be. So let's start at the beginning, Ms. Berner. You've been a passionate advocate and an effective advocate for many controversial issues. Will you carry that with you to the bench when you're faced with different laws and different facts that may draw you a different conclusion? Senator, good morning, and thank you for that question and the opportunity to respond. I have, during the course of my career, zealously advocated on behalf of millions of working men and women, and I've been proud of that work. I understand that the role of a judge is a very different role than the role of an advocate. I began my legal career as a law clerk to two esteemed jurists, and I served both on the Federal Court of Appeals and on the Federal District Court, and I saw firsthand the importance of approaching every case with an open mind, of studying the record in the case deeply and thoroughly, of understanding the relevant and binding precedent, and to fairly applying the precedent to the law without regard to prior representation or personal opinions on any issue. And that would be my commitment where I so fortunate is to be confirmed. Mr. Mangi, you have represented some controversial clients in the past. And the obvious question is, are you uh, sharing their views on things or do you feel some obligation as uh, an attorney that there be representation in court? Senator, I, I believe it's critical and the foundation of our legal system uh, that attorneys must effectively advocate for their clients, uh, regardless of whether they agree with them or not. And faced with a challenging situation of conscience on the court, when it comes down to different laws and different facts, what is your disposition? Uh, Senator, my approach is always uh, to study with an open mind and dispassionately, the law and the facts, and do my very best to come to a fair and just adjudication. And if it's a struggle with your conscience as to your own personal views, what's going to decide the case? <clears throat> Senator, I believe it is fundamentally important that litigants in the federal justice system be, in, uh, be able to receive consistent adjudication from judges. Uh, regardless of that judge's personal beliefs or background. Uh, so I set aside my personal views, my background, my beliefs. Uh, I am looking to apply the law in a fair and even-handed way, consistent uh, with my colleagues on the bench, if I'm so lucky to be confirmed. In your legal career, have you appeared before a judge or worked with a judge that became kind of your North Star in terms of what you would aspire to be as a judge? Senator, there, there are many judges for whom I have uh, great admiration. Uh, one of them in, in the District of New Jersey, I, I, I won't name, uh, but I will say what I have been so impressed by throughout my many appearances is that this judge always appears on the bench with immaculate preparation, a thorough knowledge of the law and the facts and the cases before them, conducts themselves with absolute dignity, and respect for all of the parties in front of them, 
and then writes opinions that are intellectually honest, direct, confront all the issues in the case, easy or hard, such that whether you win or lose, you feel you have been fairly heard and fairly adjudicated. Ms. Berner, same question. Thank you, Senator. I have been fortunate to be um, come before and be work for tremendous jurists throughout my life. I have been thinking a great deal over the last week, as I know many of us have, of the first woman justice on our Supreme Court. I remember so well um, her confirmation. I was a high school student. And when Sandra Day O'Connor was appointed, I saw that and I thought, as a woman, I can do anything. And she forged her own path. She broke glass ceilings. She maintained dignity and treated all fairly. And I know we are all thinking of her today. And I would like to bring her name into this room as well. Thank you, Ms. Werner. Senator Graham. 